Hello, my name is Andrew Sulu. Welcome to this introductory presentation on two-dimensional force systems. We'll cover the following. Types of forces. Principle of transmissibility of the force. Force components. Uh, an example on components. And a second example on resultants. Let's get started. So forces uh, come in various forms. Uh, you have uh, contact forces, which are forces uh, between uh, objects that are obviously in contact. And then you have got remote forces, which are forces uh, for which the, the objects are not in contact. Uh, an example is the magnetic force. And then we've got the body weight, which is a type of force that acts throughout uh, uh, a body. And then we've got what are called internal and external forces for our mechanical systems. Our internal forces will be forces that are internal to the system, and external forces will be forces that we're going to define as forces that are acting external uh, uh, to the system. And then we have what are called active and reactive forces. So uh, this is the principle of action and reaction from Newton's third law. So we have a force that's acting on, a, on another body, and then there's an equal opposite uh, reaction uh, to the original force. Now let's look at uh, various uh, uh, definitions of forces that we're going to be using uh, in our presentation. Well, what are called parallel forces. So, for example, force P is parallel to force Q in this example. And then we have what are called collinear forces. So, collinear forces will be forces that are in the same line of action. For example, force T in this case is collinear with force Q. Then we have what are called concurrent forces. These are forces that meet at a point. For example, force T in this case and Q and S and R meet at the point M. So they are concurrent forces. And then we have coplanar, coplanar forces, which are forces that are in the same plane. For example, if these forces are all in the uh, horizontal plane, then they are all coplanar forces. Then we have what are called special forces, which are obviously are not in the same plane, and these are uh, in, in three dimensions. So what is the principle of transmissibility of a force? Very simple. It says that the point of application of a force can be anywhere on the line of action, and it will have the same without an effect on the rigid body. For example, this force F can be anywhere on this line of action, and it will have the same effect on the rigid body. So let's look at components. So if we have a force F, it has components uh, in the X and Y. So F, Fx, and plus Fy. Or you can write it in terms of uh, the scalar components fx and fy using the unit vectors i and j. So you say fxi plus fyj. On the rectangular or orthogonal components, which we can see in this diagram here, we have fy and fx that are 90 degrees to each other, which means obviously fx is f cos alpha, and fy will be f sine alpha. And then this f is a Pythagoras of fx and fy. So f is fx squared plus fy squared. And this alpha is the tan inverse of fy divided by fx. Now if they are not uh, orthogonal or rectangular, they can, the angle between fx and fy can be acute or obtuse. Uh, let's look at the diagram. So for example here, this angle here is less than 90 degrees. And then for the obtuse case, this angle here is more than 90 degrees. Then in this case, we're going to use the sine or cosine rule. Okay, so uh, if we look at A of the two diagrams, uh, if we're using the sine rule, we can say uh, fx, this fx here, divided by sine gamma, is the same as fy, which is this fy, fy divided by sine alpha, which is the same as f divided by sine beta, which is what you see here. Now, if you want the magnitude of f in this case, it will be fx squared, Okay, plus fy squared minus 2 times fx fy cosine this angle beta that is between them. Okay, let's look at an example. So, force components the force f has a magnitude of 75, this f, and this angle here is 35 degrees. Determine its components in the rectangular xy axis, which is this xy here, and then in the non rectangular y h which is this y and this h let's see how we can do it so we draw some sort of representation of this so obviously in the x and y the components would be of this force f 
will be this fx and fy okay and then to calculate that i think it is easy simply uh, f fy this fy will simply be this f cos alpha and then fx is uh, 75 sine alpha which is 43 newtons in this case is negative because fx is going opposite to the direction of x in this case now let's look, look at the the non-rectangular case so we have fh like that of this the component of of the of, of f in the h direction and then we have fy this fy okay in the y direction okay we're gonna have to use the, the law of signs in this case okay then we say uh, if this is 75 we can say 75 divided by sine 30 will be equal to fh which is this fh here this one divided by sine alpha or sine 35 which is equal to fy divided by sine beta where beta is 180 minus the sum of 30 and 35 so we do have the arithmetic here we show that fh it turns out to be 86 newtons and fy is calculated as 135.9 uh, newtons okay now let's look at resultants so resultants are really a vector sum that reduces the system to the simplest form let's look at uh, a diagram here so we are attempting to add f1 okay which has components uh, f1x in the x and f1y in the y and then f2 which is similarly components like this and f3 similarly components like this to find the result so the idea really is to add uh, the, the 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 tail of this to the head of that that's what we get here and then we take the tail of this and add to the head of that and that's what we get here and then the vector that closes the loop okay is basically the resultant so it's this resultant r which has its own components rx and ry in essence, R x and R y are really the vector sum of all these things uh, put together. So this R x is simply f one x plus f two x minus this f three x, and then the the R y is simply f one y minus this f two y minus this f three y, and you get this one here. So and then you get uh, this complete uh, force representation that we see in this case. Then the magnitude of R is simply the Pythagoras of R, X, and R, Y. Okay, and then the angle that it makes with the X axis is the tan inverse of R, R, Y, and R, X. Let's look at the second example. Determine the resultant of two forces shown. Okay, these are the forces. And the angle that it makes with the X axis. The 6 kN force is acting horizontally. Okay, so R, X will simply be 6 cos 30 degrees minus 4 cos 50 degrees then you get 2.65 okay and then ROI will simply be 6 sine 30 degrees plus 4 sine 50 degrees and you get this result here uh, 6.06 .06 newtons okay and then the magnitude of R which is the resultant of RX and ROI is the Pythagoras of the 2.65 and the 6.06 uh, .06, which gives you 6.61 newtons okay and the angle that makes with the axis the tan inverse of uh, 6.064 and 2.65 and you get 66.6 uh, degrees so that's it for this segment in this video we have considered uh, covered types of forces the principle of transmissibility of a force 2d force systems okay and their components the orthogonal component the acute component and the obtuse components and then we have looked at some examples thank you for your attention